it's all about joy. May 2019, you're a Watford fan. This was a joyful, joyful occasion. It was the time when Watford got into the FA Cup final and half the town turned up and put all their worries to one side for one day. You picked up any flag you did and threw it around the place. You became overwhelmed by the experience of being in with others. Crazy day, hopeful day. And that's one of the things which joy leaves you with. Joy is completely overwhelming. You can't really articulate it very well, but you can certainly experience it. And that experience of joy is perhaps the first part of the Gospel on Sunday that we'd just like to sort of maybe contemplate the theme of the week coming through as Jesus enters into the Jerusalem. But it's only in retrospect that that joy was actually be able to be articulated by St. Paul. Right in his first letter to the Philippians, um, he talked about the joy coming about simply because of Christ emptying his divine state into being human, into the condition of a slave. Greek word for that is kenosis, and it's a joyful occasion because at the heart of it is the sense of the joyfulness of a spiritual communion with God, which has never been and hitherto done before. It's a sense of the joy of being forgiven. It's the joy in the fact that although death may be around the place, may be imminent, there's still a time to understand that in ourselves, that, that sense of joy is an important aspect and never to be forgotten. The joy comes perhaps not straight away, but in the, no, in the hope and in the faith of the raising of God from death to the resurrection. That comes later in Holy Week. But for now, going back to the gospel, the gospel of Matthew where Christ walks into it, that's forgotten for the moment. And right down the bottom of this gospel, it talks about that joyful hope of Hosanna, quite literally just cheering people coming in, cheering their hero who comes in. There's plenty of controversy within this picture. There's lots of people talking in the background that don't seem to be quite on board with this up here or down up here. There's a lot of sort of sort of discussions going on, but there's no doubt about it. There's adulation and there's the joy of the crowd. And there are people becoming attuned to the mood of the moment. There is the experience of joy within this crowd. There's people throwing just about everything they can into this particular moment. It's a short feeling. It's a fleeting moment. And as we all know, this isn't going to last forever within this gospel, because lurking in the background is a sense of horror within the shadows. There's the tinge of death about this week, which is in the background as well. The psalmist writes about walking through the valley of death, and Christ, as you can see, seems to be aware of that. However, it's still time to rejoice in the present, rejoice in the small things, rejoice in the presence of others, that sense of joy which can't be taken by them by yourself, but only sort of taken in the presence with other people and in their happiness. Because the thing about joy is that there's other powerful elements to it. Because when the immediacy of this joy is gone, what it leaves is a sense of hope for the future. There's a residue, if you like, or an imprint, some might we call a footprint which is left behind. This picture of Monet and um, his picture, White Clementis, which was sort of drawn about in the mid 19th century, just focus on the experience of perhaps what's left over when that experience of joy has been and gone. And what it does is that it gives you a vision, perhaps, of the future, a vision which makes you want to go out and search for it just that little bit more. That's the residue of hope and joy put together. And it follows on nicely in a painting from Raoul Duffy painted around 1928, simply entitled Interior with an Open Doors. It's definitely got reminiscence of Van Gogh's impressionistic uh, elements to it, in a sense that it just wants you to talk about the experience of joy, perhaps, in this one. Because joy gives you a sense of freedom and a sense of possibilities of a future world. Although in this picture, that vision of the future, that promise of its possibility is somewhere in the distance. We're standing in the room and we're looking out towards it. However, that thing which restricts us at the moment can only do so for a fleeting time because the joy is for the future and it is there to be experienced. What we need to do in these tough and dark times is perhaps keep focusing on that joy, on the joy that our faith and our hope allows us to think about. Prayer is perhaps in this case the exploration of that vision of freedom offered by Christ and through Christ. It keeps us focused, perhaps, through the joy and through the faith and the hope of the resurrection, 
in the death-tinged element of this holy week. Father God, as we reflect on this most holy week, we thank you for the gift of Jesus and the gift of our Christian faith. In the absence of being able to remember the Last Supper, crucifixion and the death of Jesus as a community, we pray that you will enter our hearts and homes like never before. Send your spirit to be with us at this time of spiritual communion so that we might reflect on the wonder of your love, the power of your forgiveness and the beauty of our universal faith and love in a new and wonderful way. Saint Joseph, pray for us.